We screwed up. Don't make these mistakes. Welcome to the channel. I'm Paul. And I'm Liz. And these are exciting times to push past fear, build confidence, and live amazing. And you will certainly live amazing if you make fewer mistakes than I did. <laughs> and I too. We have both been on the road as full-time RVers for two years. We each started out solo for October, the first year. October of 18 for me, so mm -hmm. it's been a little longer, a little more than two years. <laughs> November of 18 for me. And we made some mistakes, so we wanted to make this video about our regrets, about if we could do it all over. So learn from us. So what's your biggest regret in this whole RV life? What would you do over again in a different way? Well, longtime viewers of this channel have learned a couple of things about me. I love cycling and I love cars. Before this lifestyle, I had two cars that I had built, one 51 Studebaker and another 63 Ford F100. When I decided to do this lifestyle, I had the Studebaker was in a storage facility that I was paying $400 a month for, and I thought, I just don't want this $400 a month expense hanging over my head while I'm out, you know, driving around. So I sold the Studebaker. I, I kick myself every day about that. Aww. It's just, I just love that car. The 63 F100, you know, I would have liked to have kept that too, but that wasn't as traumatic as getting rid of the Studebaker. <laughs> So the mistake I made is I bought a truck and a trailer. I couldn't see any way to take the car along. Had I bought a, a diesel pusher, I could have bought a, a trailer. A class A, yes. A class, so, a class so now a. that you get out here into this life, you see that, yes, you can take a class A motorhome and you can have a covered enclosed trailer behind yep. it. Had I bought a, a diesel pusher on the used market and a, and a trailer to put the Studebaker in, I might have spent a little bit more money than I did on my truck and trailer, but not much. And I would still have my Studebaker. And he would have been the most popular man in the campground. All the, all the ladies would be after him with his cool car and all the men would want to talk, you know, car talk with him. So I, I wouldn't have had a chance with you. No, you wouldn't. <laughs> you know, that's, <laughs> that's the, the other side of the sword is it, it uh, yeah, I, we probably wouldn't have met. It really is all too easy to get the wrong camper. So we do talk about that um, in other videos. We have a picking the right camper one, but sometimes I think you just have to assume that the first camper you get is not gonna be the last camper you get. It just takes being out here to see what works. So the camper that I had when I started this life, I actually did not buy for full-time RV living. And I tried to full-time in a camper van. I lived in less than 100 square feet for five months. And I just got to where I hated full-time RV living. And I just felt too cramped in the camper. Everything was a big ordeal. Rainy days were the worst where I was trapped inside this small space and I would have walked mango, so I've got a wet towel hanging up and a raincoat, and I was my space was even smaller. And I thought, I'm done, until I thought, well, maybe it's not the life, maybe it's the camper. Mm -hmm. And from that, I went to a fifth wheel, which was perfect. And I couldn't have done that, actually, without the Anderson hitch, which we've made a video about, for perfect for a solo traveler. I bought a 24-foot tow behind, a bumper pull, Three months into the trip, I realized that I bought the wrong trailer. It was too small, and for the reasons that Liz just pointed out, on a rainy day, you were sitting in there, and, and uh, man, it was depressing at times. Mm -hmm. When I met Liz, actually, I was either going to buy a fifth wheel or quit this lifestyle. I was leaning towards getting a fifth wheel, actually, when we met. That's how we started talking. That was his line. He was like, oh, you have a fifth wheel. I, I'm thinking about getting one. Can I see? Yeah, it wasn't a line. It was true. <laughs> if you want to know our story, we'll put a link in the below. When you move in, all of a sudden, that fifth wheel was, it was not. too small. Right. Because yeah, I brought too many t-shirts. And too many tools. <laughs> too many tools. <laughs> Although the tools have come in handy. It was so small in the, in the 260 RD, which was a great floor plan, but it was just too small for oh, yeah. us. Packing up, I mean, travel days were, were, were tough because we had 
more stuff than their brig would hold. We would throw stuff on the bed, in the floor, and everything, and it, it was just awful. Yeah. But we ended up going to a hotel like every two or three weeks just to, yeah. oh my gosh, yeah. just to give us yeah. a break from that. So that was a clue for us. You know, it was too small. So we now have a Grand Design Solitude 310 GK. Yeah, we, we got this uh, March, March 2nd. 2nd. Yeah. yeah, so we're over 10 months living in it we've never had cabin fever we've never been like oh let's just take a break in fact i don't want to stay in a hotel this is nicer than any hotel really really is yeah yeah i mean we have stayed in hotels too i think right mm -hmm. since we've been in this but it was not because we needed to get out it was because we had errands to we run. Had, we had to go someplace and we didn't want to take the rig with us so what advice can we give people so that they don't buy the wrong rig just go out and rent something and see what it feels like if you need yeah you'll know if it's too big or too small i can't imagine too big but but well yes i can actually there is yeah. such a thing as too big yep. and too big doesn't mean that you have too much living space so much as too much to drive mm -hmm. uh, there are certain places like particularly national parks if you're over 30 feet national parks can be hard right. to get into and even some parks i mean we were some campgrounds yeah some campgrounds yeah we were at idlewild and and there's a video of of our, <laughs> our trials and travails of getting into that campground it, it, yeah if you're over 30 feet there it's, yeah. it's going to be yeah. a challenge yep yeah so now i don't know can you rent a fifth wheel i don't know i yeah. don't think so yeah so if you can't rent but i don't know then I, then i would suggest you know maybe getting a cheaper version or maybe you can you know maybe if there's someone in your family that has one you know or something yeah, yeah. just find a way to taste it <laughs> without committing all this money because yeah. we have talked to people that are new into this life a week or two who bought the wrong rig yeah. and that's a bad feeling so well, you want to avoid that well going back to your question about can you rent a fifth wheel you'd have to have a truck that would be capable of pulling it for one thing maybe people rent their truck and fifth wheel out there in the in the private world but. yeah let us know in the comments if you've heard of that now I have heard of people that will rent out their campers to a campground local to them and they'll bring it and set it up for mm -hmm. you and then you can go in and we recommend that just to get a taste of mm -hmm. it you're not getting the experience of driving it or hitching it up but at least you're getting an experience of it I would say that the two rigs that you might want to consider if you're going to rent something Rent a C, a Class C first, mm -hmm. and spend a week or whatever. Because you can rent those. You can definitely rent those. You can also rent A's. I think I, you can rent camper vans too, as a matter of fact. Yeah, probably. There are yeah. pros and cons, and you have to know yourself, your camping style, and your family to make the right choice. Right. Regret number two, and this is much bigger than I thought it would be. I actually was aware of this when I started out, and I just didn't think I needed it. But a TPMS system, especially if you're if you're driving a a, a tow behind, anything that you're towing, even if you're with a Class A towing a, a small yes. car, yes, we believe that everyone who is towing anything should have a TPMS system. We speak from experience. We had a flat tire on the Golden Gate Bridge. Actually, it was flat. Before, Before the, Golden, the Golden Gate Bridge, the, we just didn't know about it. And it was a slow flat. It wasn't a blowout. Now, there are stories all over the internet about people with campers having blowouts, and it takes out your camper. I mean, it, it, it can oh, take, it out, take out the wheelhouse. Yeah, yeah, the, it, the, the, the wheel wells. It can damage your camper, and you could be weeks where you're waiting for parts to have your camper repaired. Oh, yeah, thousands and thousands of dollars in damage um, is, is not an exaggeration. Right, and again, think about this. This is your house that you're pulling down the road. So you don't want to risk a blowout and risk losing control and actually wrecking your house, mm -hmm. right? So the TPMS system that we recommend is TST Truck. They are the best in the industry. They have the most experience with TPMS systems. They have millions upon millions of miles on these sensors that they use. And for those of you out there who, you know, I check my tires, every every time I'm gonna travel well yeah great so did I and and we went across the Golden Gate Bridge with a flat tire because I didn't know it was back there right we even checked in the middle of our trip we walked around yes, and did we a walk stop around. and do walk arounds and that is not going to do for you what a TPMS will do yep. it alerts you before it's flat it, it alerts you when it sees 
the pressure dropping rapidly. Um, so it gives you time to get off and, and repair the tire. And yeah. Yeah, just, I really wish we had that right yeah, in the beginning. Yeah, just do it. I know it's a big hit. It depends on how many wheels you're buying for. So it's, you're going to spend $600, $700 maybe. Worth it. But it's worth every penny. We believe so strongly in a TPMS system that we have partnered with TST Truck. And they are going to give you 15% off a, T, a TPMS system. It's a must-have, guys. It, it just you Just buy it. If you don't have it, buy it. Absolutely, and that also works, for, you know, for boat trailers and anything that you're pulling and on your, your regular vehicle, too. Yep. Anything with wheels. Yep. Well, the third regret um, actually cost me a lot of time, and that was Thousand Trails. I knew nothing about this campground membership program. I was already been on the road for, at that point, I would think I'd been on the road like six months when I finally heard of Thousand Trails. So, I got a used campground membership and they take months to activate like a couple months yeah. so i was waiting and waiting until i could even make reservations a couple months so i really wish that i'd had that before we love thousand trails yeah i had learned about it before i bought my rig just before i bought my see rig. so it's not his mistake it's my mistake yes it is clear <laughs> yeah. you didn't do enough research yeah. <laughs> i didn't <laughs> yeah. I couldn't believe it actually when I when I found out about it I thought okay what's the catch there there's got to be something wrong here I don't pay anything for for camping there is an upfront cost there is an annual cost but if you're going to do this lifestyle then it's a no brainer after you do the upfront cost your annual cost is $50 a month there's no other fees so you can stay in campgrounds at, at the uh, the level of membership that we have we can camp 365 nights a year at no extra cost just our $50 a month membership and that's it I think All it's a dollar sixty four a yeah, night or it's, something. Yeah, it's ridiculously <laughs> cheap. If you've done any any camping at all in in RV parks and you know how expensive they can be, uh, it's not unusual to see fifty dollars a night. In fact, that's more the the norm now. Well, that's because we're staying in the Thousand Trails parks, which run about fifty a night yeah. because they're campground resorts. Yeah. They're typically gated. They have pools. They yeah. have you know tennis yeah. courts. Yeah. They you have know. a lot of amenities, which. Unfortunately, with the pandemic, a lot of them are closed. This too shall pass. So mm -hmm. we expect everything will all be open later this year, hopefully. And, you know, then that involves the lodges being open. And there's often pool tables and TVs. And it's just great. So I was fingers crossed, by the way. <laughs> yeah. My, my fingers. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, just, you know, the thing about the Thousand Trails is I lost a couple months. Just, you know, and, oh, and I paid. Before I was a Thousand Trails member, I paid regular campground rates. Now I paid monthly in some places, but my costs went way down. Yeah, there really aren't that many regrets in this lifestyle. Um, I wish I did it sooner. I'm 71 and I wish I'd have figured this out much sooner in life. <laughs> I'm 58 and let me tell you, when I see full-time families, I'm like, oh, I wanna be six again. Can you imagine being six years old living this life, getting to travel, getting all these experiences. Yeah. And we meet families on the road and we say that to them all, all the time. What a, what a great thing you're doing for your kids. If you're out here doing this lifestyle. Tell us your regrets if you have any. It's a good learning for those of us that are sitting at home wishing we could be living this RV life. Uh, you know, we, we learn by experience. Sure, yeah. yeah. You guys out there who, who watch our videos regularly we call you the a-team and and hello to everybody out there <laughs> and the geese are saying hello too if yeah. you're wondering what's in the background i think our neighbors are feeding the yeah. geese yeah. <laughs> we love the a-team you guys are awesome we learn so much from you definitely share any regrets that you have so we can all learn and we'll see you in the next video yeah we'll see you next time mm, now he's chilly I think I'm going to have this for dinner. Um, you'll regret that. No, you will. <laughs>